So we finally see a massive dump on the crypto market today. What to do? Should you be worried? I'm going to cover all of that. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Crypto Corner. In fact, this is the first episode for 2024 and it's Bitcoin's 50th birthday. Yes, indeed, Bitcoin is turning 15 today. On this day, in 2009, was mined the first block, the Genesis block of the Bitcoin network. The Bitcoin network basically went live on this day. This is why on the 3rd of January every year, we celebrate Bitcoin's birthday. And I know many people would say, well, aren't we celebrating it on October 31st? Well, this is when the white paper was released. So this is the conception. Uh, this is when Bitcoin was conceived. But Bitcoin was really born with the mining of the first block, the Genesis block, which happened on this day in 2009. So now that it's 2024, we're talking 15 years. Bitcoin is a teenager. And as any teenager, it's prone to mood swings. And today is one of the biggest mood swings. Bitcoin dropped by more than 7%, which is not really a huge drop. I mean, right now it's recovering a little bit, so it's 6.36% down since yesterday, but it, it did drop uh, by more than 7% at first. The rest of the market, of course, is dumping much harder. Uh, Ethereum is kind of going hand in hand with Bitcoin, but as you see, Solana is 11% down, XRP is 9% down, Cardano is 9% down, Avalanche is 12.5%, Dodge is 11%, Tron is, uh, um, Tron is actually doing well, only 460 Link is almost 10%, uh, Polkadot is more than 10%, Matic 13% and so on and so forth. Most of the altcoins in fact are around 10 to 15% down, some of them even more. And this is to be expected. I actually wrote about this in my newsletter that I sent out at the start of the year. I said that if Bitcoin drops by you know 5%, altcoins will drop by 10%. And uh, if Bitcoin drops by 10 or 15%, then altcoins will be bleeding by more than 30-40%. Uh, this is something that you have to be prepared for. This is the time to actually look into accumulating because uh, many people are asking, so what do we do? Do we sell? And uh, of course, we could see a ripple effect where more and more retail gets scared and starts selling off and we see the prices dropping even more. But at this point, I feel... First of all, let's let's discuss what was the reason for this drop. And uh, according to my Twitter feed, I, I checked quickly to see what are people talking about. According to my Twitter feed, the reason is this. This is a newsletter, a report released by Matrixport. Matrixport is one of the uh, crypto companies of Jihan Wu. Jihan Wu, who used to be um, the uh, CEO of Bitmain, and uh, that used to be the biggest mining company, the uh, mining producer, mining chips producer, and mining rigs producer company in the world. Uh, he uh, left that company in order to start Matrixport. Matrixport is an investment platform. Uh, you can do um, crypto loans and borrowings in there. You can do uh, just earn interest on your crypto in there. I was using it for a long time. I haven't actually used it throughout the bear market, but uh, during the last bull market, I talked about matrix spot. I was uh, earning interest on quite a few coins in there. And in fact, um, even throughout the bear market, I kept some of the coins in there and then I pulled them out. So matrix spot is one of the big players in the Asian market and they released these reports. And this is the latest report where they talk about a possible rejection of the Bitcoin spot ETF this January which could cause a rapid 20% decline in the price of Bitcoin, they say, bringing it to the 36 to 38,000 range. The report suggests that final approval may not be achieved until the second quarter of 2024, and they advised investors to take short positions and to buy put options in the face of a rejection decision. However, Matrix Port expresses optimism regarding the long-term prospects of Bitcoin. The report also suggests that the ACC chairman Gary Gensler's comments in December 2023 indicate a potential reluctance to approve Bitcoin spot ETFs. In other words, very similar to what I've been saying all along, that uh, I don't feel that the ACC is ready to approve a spot ETF yet, even though we already started seeing adverts 
for spot ETFs on, uh, in mainstream media, suggesting that the decision is a done deal and it's just a matter of time uh, to get approved. I feel that the ACC is uh, really still trying, to, trying hard to delay you know, this process because they're trying to save the dollar. And uh, so much money went out of fiat and into crypto throughout December. I mean, the market pumped by billions of dollars. Um, currently, even right now, with this drop in the market, we are sitting at uh, 1.63 trillion market cap, overall market cap in crypto. And Bitcoin is at 830 billion. And uh, at the beginning of December, we were at uh, 740 billion for Bitcoin. We were at uh, 1.30 something trillion in uh, total market cap. So we've added uh, a significant amount, more than $20 billion we've added in the total market cap. So money went into crypto heavily. We saw so many altcoins pump by hundreds of percentage points. So definitely money is uh, coming out of fiat and it's going into crypto. So it will make perfect sense if they delay the spot ETF one more time, one last time before they eventually have to pivot and, um, you know, they have to approve it. So I was prepared for this. I did set up some uh, stop losses that got hit now at this point. I'm thinking I should have set probably more stop losses to, you know, to, to free up some capital exactly for a situation like this where we do have a FUD in the market and we do see a proper drop because I want to accumulate lower. Now, uh, the question remains, if you didn't do anything and you're just waking up to this market already, what should you do? Well, first you can do nothing and you can just wait it out because let's face it, long term, nothing has changed. We are still in a bull run. We are still in a uh, very optimistic uh, market right now. The sentiment is really bullish, even though people start getting scared at this point. The sentiment remains bullish. In fact, let's just quickly see what is the fear and greed index. Right. You see, the fear and greed index is still in greed mode. And you can find the fear and greed index on my website, crypto-corner.com. It is embedded there, so you can always see it on the main page. And uh, it's very quickly and easy to see that. We are still in greed. And especially 70 is a healthy dose of greed. I mean, if we were in the 80, in the 90% zone, then we could worry about it and we can expect a further drop. 70 though, this pullback managed to take us down to 70. We were higher before that. This is a healthy zone. I'm not really worried about this. Also, if we look at the chart of Bitcoin, we can see that this pullback took us to the 0.382 Fibonacci level, almost. We didn't even touch it, but we almost went there. And uh, this is a level that during these kind of pullbacks, if this level holds us, this is a very bullish indicator. In fact, I would argue that this was a very necessary pullback. And I've been saying that for quite some time now, that the market is desperately needing a proper pullback, a, a bit of a correction in order to uh, breathe, you know, to, to be able to take a, a kind of a, a break or a, a cooling off period, if you wish. And then we can continue the next leg up. We can't continue just going up without any breaks because then it, it becomes unsustainable. So this consolidation period here and this drop today is actually giving us a very nice breather for the market. I mean, I'm looking at Bitcoin, but I'm talking about the whole market because Bitcoin, of course, is driving the market. If Bitcoin is making big moves like today, 7% is kind of a big move for Bitcoin, then the altcoins are making even bigger moves on the downside. And uh, when Bitcoin is uh, consolidating and this was a nice, you know, sideways move here for a few weeks. Uh, this actually gave the altcoins the room to, uh, you know, shoot up and to have a mini out season. Now, this out season is put on hold for the moment. We are all uh, concentrating on Bitcoin, of course. Uh, this is why the altcoins are bleeding far more than Bitcoin, because money is now coming out of altcoins and it's going into either fiat or Bitcoin. This is when money is coming out of altcoins, it usually goes into Bitcoin or fiat. So... If people are more bullish on Bitcoin, then money will go in Bitcoin. But if people are really scared and everything, then money will go in fiat. However, 
money is coming out of altcoins far quicker and in far bigger amounts than it's coming out of Bitcoin. This is why Bitcoin is dropping by 5 or 7% and altcoins are dropping twice more, you know, 10, 15, 20%. So if you missed that move already, I would say it's probably too late. I mean, you still have the choice because I'm sure that many people are now expecting a further drop. So they're pulling out money from uh, their positions and their closing positions and everything. We saw a lot of liquidations and uh, it's possible that uh, we can see another push on the downside, a push that will uh, take us perhaps to just quickly break this Fibonacci level here, the 382 Fibonacci, the 0 0.382, which is sitting at 41,200. Uh, we can go and retest the 40,000 again, but this is not a guaranteed, guys. So if you are going to be selling at this point, if you didn't sell early, if you didn't have stop losses already uh, set up and everything, uh, then it might be too late for you. So I wouldn't advise, even though this is not a financial advice, of course, I'm not really telling you what to do, but it doesn't make sense to me to actually pull your money out at this point where we are already so close to that support level and expect that if we go a little bit lower, you will scoop it a little bit cheaper. You could do that, but you are going to make a small profit and your risk is actually quite high because this could have been the whole drop. I mean, first of all, let's not forget that uh, it was based, that whole drop was based on assumption. This report here by Matrix Pod is, uh, I mean, I know that they say why the SEC will reject Bitcoin, but they only assume that the SEC might reject. It, it, it's not a guarantee. They don't really have insider information to say that it's uh, definitely going to be rejected. So this is, report is based on assumption and uh, it was suggesting to institutional investors, because this is a report for institutional investors, it was suggesting that they should actually pull out their money in order to protect in case there is a rejection. And a rejection would actually be beneficial even to the uh, spot ETFs, to BlackRock and all the other players, because it will give them another uh, period of accumulation so uh, and it takes the prices down so it makes it easy for everyone who wants to accumulate it doesn't make it easy for those who are already in who already have positions whether it's bitcoin or altcoins it doesn't make it easy for you guys because or for us i should say because i'm also heavily in altcoins and bitcoin of course i did free up some capital over the last few days and i had some stop losses so i do have some capital now to play around but uh, it's a small amount it's not really the majority of my capital majority is already invested so especially if you were buying uh, altcoins and bitcoin over the last few days we, where we were at local tops and i said that on my twitter and in my uh, telegram groups i was talking about the fact that on many charts we are in local tops so it was very risky to enter positions over the last few days but if you did you should probably just wait it out because i don't see a, a strong uh, a narrative here for a, a further drop a further drop could occur it could be a, a minor drop. I don't see a strong narrative to take us another 10 or 15% down. Uh, we, we do have the support of the 0.382 Fibonacci, which so far is holding us. If that support doesn't hold us, also that support very soon or in the next couple of days is going to coincide with the 50th EMA, which is another strong support. Typically, when we see these kind of bull rallies, we pull back to that uh, 50th EMA, and then we find the support and we continue going upwards. Sometimes we break that 50th EMA and we turn the trend, but that is a rare occurrence, especially in a strong bullish sentiment like right now, I don't really see us breaking that 50th EMA. We do have another support, which is the 0.50 Fibonacci level that's sitting at 40,144. This is the 50th, the 0.50 Fibonacci level. Uh, this will be a, a brief break below the 50th EMA. We could do that. It's going to be very brief. I feel that there will be a lot of appetite for Bitcoin once we get to that level. And we also have the 89th EMA, 
which is uh, currently entering this ideal buy zone for me. This is the 38,000 range. This is what I was talking about in my newsletter, that if we see a Bitcoin rejection, this is the level where we have a much st stronger support. So I feel that if we are to come to that level, this will be ideal accumulation zone. We are not guaranteed that we will see that zone though. And uh, I personally would not be selling at this level at 41, 42,000 only to be scooping it at 38,000. This is a small percentage. It's not a big gain. Um, it's too much of a risk. So risk reward ratio doesn't really make sense to me. So I feel that at this point, you do have two choices. You can either sell here and hope for lower prices and take that risk, which is not a, a good risk for me, or you can do nothing and just wait it out, which I feel is going to be the most successful strategy. And also, if you have some fiat sitting on the sidelines, now is a good time to be accumulating because I don't really expect a much bigger drop than that. This was the drop. Don't worry about it. Uh, it will go. Everything goes very quickly in crypto. And I'm pretty sure by tomorrow, we're going to be looking at green candles and a green market overall. So this is it from me, guys. Happy 15th Bitcoin birthday. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I'm not going to take any more of your time. If you have not subscribed yet, I know that 80% of you who are watching my videos are not subscribers. So please do me a favor, hit the subscribe. Also check out the links in the description where I drop the links to all of the crypto services that I'm personally using and that I recommend to you. And uh, thanks for watching this until the end. If this was helpful, share it with someone else who would also benefit from watching it. This is everything from me. I'm going to see you in the next video.